What's a soulmate? It's a... Uh, well, it's like a best friend, but more. It's the one person in the world who knows you better than anyone else. It's someone who makes you a better person. Actually, they don't make you a better person. You do that yourself. Because they inspire you. A soulmate is someone who you, you carry with you forever. It's the one person who... who knew you and accepted you and... believed in you before anyone else did. Or when no one else would. And no matter what happens, you'll always love them. Nothing can ever change that. Hey, somebody tell Issa Rae to, to make this into a movie or something. Look, I, I could watch this on replay for like an hour and a half. No dialogue and none of that, man. I'd pay good money to do it, too. I love this, man. And the people that I saw in the comments that were talking about this video also loved it as well. There was no negativity, which is a rarity these days. But something I kept seeing, people was like, yo, black love is beautiful. And it is. Don't get me wrong. I'm all for it. But the first thing that came to mind whenever I saw this couple, shout out to them, by the way, but the first thing that came to mind was intimacy, true, pure intimacy. It is so underrated. Like people don't talk about that enough. I don't know if because it's understood or people don't know how powerful it is. Matter of fact, and people look at me crazy whenever I say this, I think intimacy like this is so powerful. It can heal you. Like it can literally extend your life. Now hear me out, stress kills, right? That's not an opinion. That's a scientific proven fact. It causes inflammation. It causes terminal illnesses from cancer to heart disease. You know, it causes depression, anxiety, which leads to suicide. Okay, if stress can kill you, if stress can shorten your years on this earth, what can intimacy do? What can intimacy do? Again, true intimacy. I'm not talking about just sexual intimacy. I'm not talking about foreplay, you know. No, no both physical and non-physical, non-sexual intimacy like what we see right here. As a matter of fact, if you just have sexual intimacy and you don't have the true intimacy like what we see right here, it actually may backfire and cause more stress, cause you to feel empty, cause you to feel used like a piece of meat, especially women because y'all are more connected emotionally to your bodies and all that other good stuff. But this is what I consider to be true intimacy, like really being comfortable with each other. I mean, she's melting his, in his arms. He's magnetized to her. Intimacy, man. You know, two people that want to taste, touch, smell each other every time they think of each other, want to experience each other, want to experience new things together, man. Like, that type of intimacy is powerful. It ain't nothing to play with. Now, let me give a disclaimer. You can't just jump into this type of intimacy. Yeah, it's all good and great and it's powerful and everybody should have it and all that good stuff, but there's certain boxes you gotta check off first of things that need to be there or rather things that don't need to be there in order for intimacy to have a true chance in your relationship. Like, you know, you can't have a lot of criticism, a lot of inconsistency, a lack of communication, a lack of trust, a lack of boundaries, a, a, you know, a lack of that kind of stuff. Like you can't, you can't just skip past that and go straight into intimacy. And there's only two reasons a person will even try to do that. One, maybe because they're genuinely naive. They don't know. They haven't seen a relationship like this or been given the game from somebody who had a relationship like this on how to build towards that, which is why we need these conversations. Or two, they think they're above that process. They think they're above the work it takes in order to lay the foundation for intimacy. They think they're above the patience that it takes, which you can't necessarily call a person like this a straight up narcissist. You can't just diagnose them with that. But it's definitely a narcissistic red flag. Something I go in depth about in my book, Don't Forget Your Crown. Matter of fact, I'm going to do something I've never done before. For the next 150 people to get Don't Forget Your Crown, I'm going to let you get my other nine books for the price of one today at the link down in the caption if you haven't gotten it yet but moral of the story is this if you have somebody who is willing to put in the work you know willing to go through that process willing to be accountable to you willing to like employ the patience it takes in order to lay the ground for intimacy in your relationship this is your daily reminder that you are blessed beyond words you got something special don't lose it but those are just my thoughts Y'all let me know what you think down in the comments. Again, don't forget your crown is available at the link down in the caption. And for the next 150 people, whenever you get it, you can get my other nine books for the price of one today at the link in the caption. I'll let y'all later. Y'all be good. Peace.